Right, guys, so I've got Gareth Taylor here. We're going to start off with Gareth and we'll go on to Lauren. Um, as always, I will upload this to the media portal as soon as I can afterwards. Um, we've got a 10.30 embargo, if that's all right for tonight, just to ensure that we can obviously make sure that the men's game gets and our game gets the same coverage. Um, if we can start with the broadcast section, if you start raising your hands, always, that'd be great. Thank you. So, Emma, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, thanks, Emma. Hi, Gareth. Hope you're okay. Hi, Emma. You okay? Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, yeah, nice to see you. Um, obviously, it's a, a big week, Champions League football. Um, yeah, but everyone must be really excited for it. Yeah, yeah. It's um, you know we had a we had a good performance um, last week. and made a good start. There's always uh, two parts to these to these games, and over here now in, in Florence, and I'm looking forward to the to the game tomorrow. Yeah, and like you say, you, you've got a nice lead going into the into the game. So will that perhaps, I know all managers hate this question, but is it perhaps a, a bit of a team selection? Might we see some rotation, given the fact that you have got a bit of a lead there? You might be able to change things up a little bit. Well, I think the fact that we've got another 24 hours, we'll see how a few players check in. Um, we don't play again, you know, for, well, it's inside a week, actually, but we don't play till next Wednesday. So that gives us a little bit of time, but um, yeah, we'll just um, we'll, we'll take the next twenty four hours to see how the few of the players check in. But uh, you know, I've always said previously that we've made changes, and when we made changes previously, it hasn't kind of detracted from team performance and those players who uh, potentially do get an opportunity. They're they're the ones who've been really pushing the players on the pitch in training and making sure that they know. That they're they're being pushed from behind, so I think that's really important. Yeah, and we saw Rose Lavelle playing midfield recently as well. Um, is that something we can look forward to seeing a little bit more? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, Rose is uh, is looking now to to get a, a consistent run in the team. We, we've said that previously. You know, at the end of the day, that would be down to her and her performances, and and hopefully staying free of of injury. Um. But yeah, in terms of her positioning, she's capable of playing in all the front five positions for me. She's a very, very good player, very intelligent player and uh, has the ability to affect the game no matter where she plays. Yeah, and I don't know whether you watched the Chelsea Atletico Madrid game. Did, did you see it? No, I didn't. I, I saw the result. We were just um, just arriving in uh, Florence by the time the game kind of just finished. I heard it was eventful. Yeah, and yeah, also, very eventful. Uh, yeah, it looks like you, you can't score a penalty against Chelsea these days. But um, yeah, just wondering on, uh, about your views on on them and, and their potential threat in the competition. Obviously, all of us back home would love to see a Chelsea-Manchester City final, ideally. But um, yeah, how, how much of a threat, obviously, are, are, are Chelsea to you in, in this competition? I would say they're a threat to us. I mean, they're a good team. And I think everyone back home should be uh, hoping that both teams can go as far as they possibly can in the competition. And that's really healthy for, for English teams in, in this comp. So, um, yeah, there's, there's no uh, concerns from us and, and we wish them well. I think it's great that they've got through. Um, we're trying to do the same. And like I say, it's, it's only healthy for, uh, for the English teams that we're, we're really pushing and, and getting down to the latter stages of, of Champions League. Yeah, absolutely. Nice one. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Uh, Dom, please, Radio Manchester. Hello, Gareth. How's it going? Hi, hi, Dom. Um, just wanted to ask you, really, uh, sort of your personal experience this season in Europe. How are you enjoying the, the whole European experience this season? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's, um, it seems a, a while, obviously, since the Gothenburg game. But, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. They, they're extra special, these games. You know, I've enjoyed all of, my, all of my games and competitions that we played in so far this season. But... I think the Champions League is that little bit more special. Um, I think the players would agree with that as well. And you probably get the same reply from them that it's just a different format, real different format. And uh, it's more of a kind of, um, there's a, a lot of tactical thought that goes on between games in terms of uh, what's re what's required and, and what's deemed as probably a good um, scoreline to have in the first leg regardless of whether you're home and away. So, yeah, they're great. Really exciting games. And, um, you know, to be able to, in the current climate, to be able to travel like we are 
to to Florence is is we're very fortunate for that to happen. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the game tomorrow. Absolutely, and I guess that that third goal in the last leg gives you a bit more more comfort going into this one. I know uh, Evan just mentioned there about sort of rotating the squad. And Abby Del Campo is one that dropped out on on Sunday. Do you think she'll be back into the lineup tomorrow? Well, she's she's pushing. She's pushing to start. You know, as all of the players are. You know, everybody's training really well. I think that's the main thing. And um, we've we've got a, a healthy squad, and you know, we've we've had players who've been missing for certain games or needs to be managed in certain games. Um, and hopefully, you know, if we can perform and get through this tie tomorrow, because I think, like you say, it was a, it was an important th- uh, goal, the third goal. Um, and people always talk about breathing space, but I've always said that no tie is ever over after the first game, really. Um, you've still got to go out and do a professional job and make sure that um, you give yourself the best possible chance. And no matter who I pick tomorrow, we'll, we'll make sure that that happens. Just thinking on in terms of about the season plan, because you can still compete on all fronts this season, so, uh, all the competitions. When you look at your calendar at the start, do you almost sort of plan who's going to sort of fit in there, or, or do you have to just be reactionary as a manager? From the start of the season to now? Yeah, sort of mapping out the, the calendar, I guess, in, in your mind with your staff, how you're going to sort of play certain aspects. I think you have like an outline structure and, and where competitions sit and where, and where they and when they kind of take place. But really, it's, um, I think it's really important to focus game by game, you know. And, and once this game is, is kind of done, we'll be focusing on Bristol away next Wednesday. And, and then after that is the game after that. But we don't look too far ahead. I think it's dangerous to do that. So we just need to make sure that, you know, whatever the competition is, we want to be successful in. Um, we want to make sure that we're, we're right there when it matters. And, you know, I think it's... Uh, this, this is an important one that we focus on, make sure we do the job tomorrow properly. And and then after that, we can start to concentrate on the next one. You've spoken about how much you, you enjoy the competition. How imperative is success in, in the Champions League this season to Manchester City? Um, I'm not sure if it's imperative, but, you know, we've had a couple of um, probably... Uh, Slight failures in the last couple of seasons, you know, going out in, in in the earlier rounds. So, yeah, I think to get into the quarterfinals, I think that's progress. But, of course, if we're able to do that, then we want to look further and we want to look beyond. I've, you know, we're under no illusions. We have, a, we have a good squad, but there's many other good squads in this competition as well. And I think, you know, when it comes down to the nitty gritty of cup competitions... It's about the team that turns up and performs and, and has that extra bit to get across the line. And uh, Because the closer you get, obviously, from quarterfinals onwards, you don't tend to get any second chances like you would do in a, in a league format. So, yeah, it's uh, game by game, making sure we're ready um, and, and trying to go as far as we possibly can. Uh, and just finally, on the person we're going to speak to next, Lauren Hemp, but just talk about her contribution since coming back from injury. I know you've called her like a new signing uh, before, but she's been invaluable, hasn't she? Yeah, she has. Big loss previously um, while she was injured and, uh, you know, she's come in and had a, a high impact. You know, the stats are very good. We've spoken and I still think there's a lot of growth to come from from Lauren. I think there's lots of areas of a game that she can really develop and we'll help her with that. Um, and also she's a young player as well, so we need to allow her to grow, uh, allow her to, to develop. But because uh, she's a talented player, there's no doubt. And we've been really pleased with her contribution so far. Cheers, Gareth. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Well, thanks, Don. Right, we're moving on to the written section now, guys. We're going to start raising your hands and we'll, we'll thrash through a few of those while Lauren comes. Um, Dan, do you want to start with you, please? Hey, Gareth. Hope you're well. Hi, Dan. Um, obviously, the first leg was, you know, one-sided in terms of, you know, I don't think they had a shot on target for Fiorentina. They're going to have to go for goals. Are you expecting him to, you know, really try and put some pressure on and, you know, just shoot on sight tomorrow? Potentially, yeah, potentially. Um, we need to be aware of that. I think it's, um, like you say, sometimes when you've got nothing to lose, you can see a team come out and be a little bit braver. We've played in the last three teams we played against across across the competitions there's been you know difficult to break down that low block um, they could come that way again tomorrow and, and potentially look at it with damage limitations but they also could come out as well and, and really go for it so we need to be alive and aware of that um, 
and I'm sure we will be. And obviously, if you do get through, um, just looking at the teams that were left, it feels like you know there's potentially no favourable draw. Um, I mean, you look Leon, Barcelona. You know, it, it feels like if you get through, it's a case of very big business in the next round. There's not going to be a, an easy game or you know any, anything other than a really really tough game, presumably. Yeah, but that's what you expect from quarterfinals. I think you know we had a really tough game against Gothenburg in, in terms of a tough tie. I think a lot of people would have looked at that as being one of the toughest kind of teams you could get at that stage. Um, but yeah, of course, when, you know, if, we, if we're fortunate enough tomorrow to be in the hat and be in the quarterfinals, we're expecting a, a, really, a really tough team because all of the teams would have done tremendously well to get to this point. Cheers, Gareth. I think that's all from me. Cheers, Dan. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Any last questions for Gareth, guys? If you want to raise your hands, otherwise we'll let Gareth go and we'll bring Lauren in. Dummy, you just got your hand up there. Just still... <laughs> I think he's waving goodbye. Uh, no, it's... Yeah, all good. Oh, good. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> right, thanks, guys. We'll bring Lauren in shortly. Thanks very much. Thank you. Hi guys, got Lauren Hemp here. If you'd like to ask Lauren a question, we'll start with the broadcast section. So if you guys want to start raising your hands, that'd be great. Emma, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, hi Lauren, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Nice to see you. Um, hope you've had a nice time in a, in a nice foreign country. And I hope the, the weather's better than it is in Manchester. It's currently absolutely chucking it down. So Yeah, definitely. I've literally sat outside for the last hour. First chance son I've had in ages. Oh, amazing, really jealous. Um, yeah, I've just said to Gareth, I bet you're all really excited to go into this game because you know you've got a nice, nice three goal cushion, and, and obviously it's Champions League football, so yeah, you must be buzzing. Yeah, definitely. I think it's important not to be complacent. Obviously, we're three nil up going into the away leg, but I think we've still got to stick to the game plan, and we've been focusing on stuff in the last week to prepare us for this game, and we're really looking forward to hopefully finishing off the job. Yeah, and it must be a really good experience for you as well, being such a young player and getting to play in, in these big games and, and in this, you know, this competition, the Champions League. So, uh, yeah, what have, what have you sort of learned from, from your appearances so far? Yeah, of course, it's great to be out here. And I mean, I don't get many opportunities, obviously. Uh, and I didn't come to Gothenburg last time, but it's nice to get these opportunities where you are travelling away. Like, it's the games you want to play in. And I'm lucky enough to be at a club that are pushing for like Champions League trophies and I'm lucky to be here amongst great players and a great squad and hopefully we can get the job done and hopefully get more experiences in different cities like this throughout the competition. Yeah, we were just talking about your your form after returning from injury. Um, it's been brilliant. So uh, Gary, Gareth was very complimentary, but but he, d he did say that he's, he's had conversations with you on on where, you know, what areas you can still improve on. Um, yes. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like I'm pleased with how I've been contributing to goals and assists like since coming back from injury. But I know there's a lot of things I need to improve on. Like I'm only 20 and there's a lot more that I can be doing to help the team. And I just want to be consistent through each game. And I think it's important that I've had these conversations with Gaz over the last few weeks about where I can improve and where I can help the team even more to hopefully contribute to more because I want to keep pushing myself and I want to keep improving and hopefully... I'll help the team to lift trophies this season and carry that on throughout the seasons to come. 
Yeah, and just finally for me, I've, I've got to ask, because obviously we, we've had the news today about um, Hegarisa being named Team GB manager. Obviously, you, um, you've done a bit of work with her at England. So, yeah, um, what's your reaction to, to that appointment? Yeah, it's great to see. Obviously, I worked with her over the last camp and like got on well with her. She's really knowledgeable and she'll definitely help the team to hopefully go on to win the Olympic gold and I'd love to be part of that and I can't wait to carry on working with her whether that be this season next season or hopefully she'll help me improve and I know she's a great manager to lead the girls to success nice one thanks Lauren good luck thank you thanks Emma uh, Dom please ready Manchester hi Lauren you okay yeah nice good are you, you. Good, thank you. Um, just wanted to, to sort of reflect a little bit because you spoke about the form you've been in since you, you returned from injury. But I just wanted to ask you how sort of going through that injury process was for you. And we, we hear it all the time with footballers and how challenging that can be. And I imagine in the midst of everything else going on in the world, it, it wasn't the easiest time for you. Uh, how was it during that, that period? Yeah, obviously it was quite difficult. I mean, it was just after pre-season that obviously tore my hamstring and it's something I've done before, so it wasn't the first time and I knew that it'd be a long journey ahead. But I think with the support I had around me from the staff and the players, I think it's the best place to be when you've got such an injury like that. And I think the support I had from them definitely helped me to sort of push on in the gym, keep working hard to make sure I came back fitter, stronger. And obviously I'm lucky enough to now be in the starting eleven. Um and had opportunities so I'm just looking forward to hopefully pushing that on and make sure I continue to be part of the squad and um, part of the success of this club. Was there an element of maybe because it was a new manager in Gareth Taylor and, it, and you did get the injury during that pre-season period of maybe when you came back having to do that bit extra and, and try and impress a, a new manager or, or was it fairly comfortable? I mean I had lots of conversation with Gaz throughout my injury and before and I worked hard with him in pre-season and obviously all the girls, it's a tough competition. And I mean, there's fantastic players here and I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by them every day and continuing to push on. And this what's made me a better player, being around people like that. And I think me and Gaz have got a good relationship as I have with many of the other staff. And I think being at this club has sort of helped my growth and improvement as a player. So I wouldn't necessarily say that I was worried coming back. Like I knew I was in the best place possible to help me improve and get better. And since then, you've been flying as well. Ellen White said after the first leg in the Champions League last week that, that playing in a front three with, with you and Chloe Kelly is a dream. And for someone like Ellen White to say that for a young player it must be a great feeling. Yeah, definitely. She's someone that I've looked up to ever since I was younger when I was watching the World Cups back at home and to be able to play on the same pitch as her and on the same pitch as many of the other girls here is just an honour really and we've been working closely together in training as well after training and trying to get the partnership right as we have done with Chloe and all the other wingers and forwards that are here so it's a nice partnership to have and it's nice to know that whoever comes into that slot because we've got such a versatile team that they can do the job and, and we can get the results. And in terms of the Champions League for you, how much of a priority is that on, on your, your list? I imagine as a player, that's what the aspiration is to, to win in Europe. Yeah, of course. I mean, like, who doesn't? Like, I'd love to win the Champions League and it's something that I'd definitely love to tick off my list and hopefully we can do it this year and then um, see how many seasons I can do it for. I mean, obviously, we're looking towards the league and but right now we're focusing on the Champions League and the game coming up tomorrow. So I'm really looking forward to it. And hopefully we can get the result we want. And just finally, uh, for me, I mean, you mentioned there wanting the Champions League success. You you are also going for nearly every other competition as well. It must be a bit. It must be quite fun. Yeah, of course it is. I mean, like traveling different places, seeing different cities, like it's amazing. And getting the results obviously is such a bonus. And we're looking to push on, and we want to do better than we did last year. And it starts from tomorrow, and then focus then turns to Bristol. I think we're taking each game as it comes and we're just looking forward to, like I said, picking up the results and continuing to get as far in each competition as we can go because we know there's no limits. We've just got, we've got the team that can do it and we're just looking forward to going to show people what we can do. Thank you very much for your time and uh, good luck tomorrow. Cheers Thank on. you. Well, thanks, Dom. Uh, we'll be on to the written section, guys. You want to raise your hands? We've got a question for Lauren.
Any additional questions, guys, or has everything been covered there? Okay, perfect. Right, we'll leave it there then. Brilliant. Thanks very much, guys. Just a reminder, this will be a 10.30 embargo tonight. Um, I'll upload it to the media portal in the next 10, 10 15 minutes. But if you've got any questions, as always, just drop me a text. Brilliant. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.